Hey, this is Andrew Brown from Exam Pro, and we are taking a look at control plane nodes versus worker nodes. So control plane nodes were formerly known as master node, and the only reason I'm mentioning this is because um, a lot of documentation out there, like tutorials and stuff, are completely out of date, and they're not using the new inclusive term. So I'm sorry for mentioning uh, this term here, but I just have to because you need to know what it is when you are looking up information out there. Even the Kubernetes.io website still has some outdated stuff, mostly in the graphics, not so much uh, in the text. So they seem to fix that. So, you know, a few years out and I think we'll all be moved over to the new terminology there. And then you have worker nodes. So control plane node manages processes like scheduling, restarting nodes. And then the worker node does the work as the name implies. It runs your apps, it runs your jobs, and it's running pods and containers. They're both running pods and containers, but when we think of pods and containers, we're thinking about more of the worker nodes because the other ones, uh, even though they are pods, we're thinking of them as distinct uh, components, okay? And so let's take a look at the, the components that are involved here. So the first thing is the API server and Notice how I, I said it was the backbone of commu communication. Well, look at it. It looks like a big long line here and everything communicates along it. So that's what I mean by backbone of communication. And the way you are talking to stuff is generally gonna be through the cube CTL, okay? Or there's the API. I guess I don't have a graphic for the API. I guess it is the API server. So that would be you sending um, like HTTPS requests uh, directly to it. So I imagine that's like how um, managed cloud service providers are talking to it. Um, but anyway, so that's the API server. Then we'll have the scheduler. So this determines where to start a pod on worker nodes. We have the control manager. So the detect states changes. So like if the pod crashes it, it tells it to restart. You have etcd or etcd, however you want to call it. This is a key value store that stores the state of the cluster. So Controller Manager highly relies on uh, Etsy, and you have Kubelet. So this allows users to interact with the node via the Kube CTL because Kubelet, no matter if it's a worker node or a control plane node, it's on both of them. And so, you know, generally all of these are in the Kube system. I really should have wrote this in the course, but they're in the Kube system namespace. And uh, the components that can be in the control plane node slightly vary. So maybe instead of the control controller manager, you'd have the cloud controller manager. If you're using something like K3S, they probably have slightly different control plane um, uh, components inside of them. But you generally need to know for the exam what is in a control plane. So know, know what these all are and know that they are in the control plane and not in the worker nodes. All right. So now onto the worker nodes. The worker nodes will have kubelet. So all, all nodes will have a kubelet for communication. And that's the way it will talk to container runtime. We'll talk about it in a second. And then you'll have a proxy. And so we'll have container runtimes, pods, and containers. So just kind of an illustration there. So why is there a proxy and why is there a kubelet? Well, the proxy... Actually, you know what? I don't think I have it here, but um, what's missing over here is core DNS, okay? So generally we'd also have, <laughs> I can't believe I have it missing, but you'd have core DNS. I have it in another slide, so it's not a big deal. So we should really have that here as well, but I suppose it doesn't talk directly to the API server, but um, proxy is what is used when you have incoming traffic, right? So I'm a user, I use your website, and how am I reaching that pod? Well, it's gonna be through the DNS service, core DNS or uh, cube DNS. And then that's gonna go through the proxy. The proxy is gonna go through IP tables, which we'll talk about in this course, and it'll reach the application running the container. If we're trying to interact with our container programmatically through cube CTL, it's gonna go through kubelet, and that's gonna go through the container runtime into the container. Uh, so again, if it doesn't click right now, it's okay. We're gonna cover this in different variations here and you will know it. But there you go.